A handy tool for evaluating expectations is what's called the expectation rule. Expectation rule. And to introduce it, let me first give you a little fact. Fact. G of x is a random variable if x is a random variable and g is a function, a real valued function on the real line, that is measurable. So g is a is a measurable function. Uh, now this is sort of a technical condition I mentioned. I didn't really define exactly what measurable functions are, but I mentioned it and you don't need to worry too much about this uh, the, this measurable condition here because most of the time any function that you encounter is going to be measurable. So this is this says that a function of a random variable is itself a random variable. That's the main idea. And a bit of notation, which is often used, is we often write ex for the expectation of x. Just a shorthand. Sometimes we drop the parentheses, but sometimes we still include the parentheses in order to emphasize the, so, you know, how to parse the expression, basically. And here is the theorem, the expectation rule. So if x is a random variable and g is a measurable function is a measurable technically speaking measurable function then we have the following two properties probably following two results in two different cases so the expected value of g of x is the sum. So here, right, I'm, I'm using both of these. I'm using the fact that g of x is a random variable. And I'm also using our new notation here. I'm dropping the parentheses that I would have put around here. And this is the equal to the sum over all the elements, little x, in capital script x with a line through it. Remember, this is the set of all values that this random variable x might take. So it's the sum of g of x, the value of g on that, on that value, times p of x, where p in this case, so this is if x is discrete with pmf lowercase p. So that's the first case, and that's very nice because it looks a lot like just a uh, regular expectation, except we've replaced x here with g of x. And the second case, for densities, the expectation of g of x is the integral, and it looks just the same. g of x, well in this case it's the density f of x, integrating with respect to dx, if x has density f. And these are both, these both hold with our, our usual qualifier when these are, well, let's say when these quantities are well defined in the sense that I introduced in the previous, in the earlier videos on ex expectations. We talked about uh, it was important to make sure that these things are well defined. So that's the theorem, the expectation rule. And I'm going to prove for you the first case here, because it's so it's such a cute little proof. Second one's a little more involved, so we'll skip that. But the so the proof of one, so just a happy little proof. So let y 
equal g of x. So this is a random variable, we'll call it y. Now, if we start to evaluating this thing, this is the expected value of g of x is, of course, just the expected value of y. And this is the sum, just by definition, over all elements, little y, and I'm going to use capital script y in the place of this capital script x for the all the values that this random variable y might take of the value times, well it's the PMF times the PMF of y, and let me just write that as probability that the random variable equals little y, that's by definition the PMF. And now let's take a closer look at this quantity here, this probability. So this probability that y equals little y by the definition of y, y is just g of x, so we can just plug that in. And now this is equal to, so this is the probability that g of x equals little y. And so this is, so we can, since x is a discrete random variable, Remember, we're doing one where x is discrete, and we can break this up into a sum. So we can sum over all, so what is this? This is the probability, so this is the sum of the probabilities of all the, all the ways that, that x could satisfy this condition. And for any such way, you know, for any value, so a value x for which this is satisfied would have g of x equal to little y. So if we sum over all the ways this could happen, this is the sum over all the elements, all the values that x could take, subject to this condition, such that this holds, of the probability that x equals, that x takes on that, that value. And this is equal to, well, this is just, we can just plug in, this is the PMF here, right? So that's just P of X. And let me abbreviate this by X such that G of X equals Y. This is all the X's that in this capital script X. Okay, now we have this little fact, this little result. So let's plug it back in and see what happens. We get a new color here. All right. So we'll plug that in. So we've got expected value of g of x equals this sum over elements little y. And when we plug it in, we can move we can go ahead and move this little y inside the sum, right? So we can so we'll go ahead and just do that. Sum, so that's this sum, and then I move the y, this little y inside times the PMF of x times P of x. And now, here's the nice little trick, since everything, for every x in this sum, for, you know, a fixed y, y equals g of x. So we can substitute g of x for y here. So, this, so let me draw you a little picture, actually, real quickly to illustrate what's going on here. So I've got these values x, and I've got some values y over here. These are equal to g of x. So each x, g is, so this is what g looks like. So g is a function from x's to y's. So each x has to go to some y. So maybe this one goes here, maybe this one goes to the same one. Uh, maybe this one goes here, and so does that one, and so does that one, and this one goes somewhere else. So this, this sum here, is uh, broken up into, so we're summing over the y's, so for each y, and then we're summing over the x's that go to that y. Right, so for each, so for this y, I'm going to sum over the x this x and then this x. And then for this y, well, there's no x's that go to that one, so we so we don't have any x's. No x that go to that one. And then we're then we have this y, and we sum over these x's. So 
this sum is actually over it's the sum over all the x's in this this script x. So when I plug this in here, so I have this still for now, g of x, p of x, and because this because of this you know, you think about it this way, this is a partitioning the space of the values x into these level sets, the sets where g of x equals y, and so therefore this is just exactly a sum over all the elements little x of script x. And that, so we have the expected value of g of x equals this thing, and that is exactly what we were trying to prove. So here, remember, I carried through, if you're wondering where this popped up again, I, uh, I suppressed it momentarily just to abbreviate the notation here. So that's a nice, uh, happy little fact. Very handy tool to save yourself some work.